some other ways to use the edge of handler. So if Chris has seized me, if he's grabbed a certain area, I may wish to use the edge of handler to weaken that grip. You can never presume that he will make him let go. But what I can do is that's a strong structure. If I drop my body weight, I've broken that structure. Now what I can do from here is go from a vertical edge of hand blow into a horizontal edge of hand blow. If we just turn to the camera, so he seizes here. I tuck my chin because if he seizes me, he's probably going to punch me. So tucking my chin is important. I tuck my chin and break that structure. You notice that my body weight sunk. I then will explode into him here with this edge of hand blow. And then I may go for multiple iterations of this. So you are chopping him down. So we're going, dropping the chin, whoom, break the structure, hack, 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 until he hits the deck. Now, normally in training situations, we'll do that with a bit more force. But we've got quite a lot of material to cover today and I want Chris to be okay. <laughs> but if you can imagine each iteration of this is hacking into that opponent. So we've got the, got the grab, I'm gonna drop my body weight, break the structure. Smash, smash, smash. And you can imagine how it goes. Now, if Chris hasn't got the grab, but he's going for the grab, I can use this to prevent it. Bang. Now, prevention is, is always better than a cure. So it's better for me to not get grabbed than deal with a grab. Yeah, if he grabs me, I have to deal with it. If he's about to grab me, I might as well just prevent that, prevent me needing to have to deal with a grapple. So again, it can be as a counter to a grapple. And it can also naturally be a counter to a strike. So if a strike comes in, again, you need good wherewithal. You need to be able to turn your body to deal with this. In reality, Fairburn doesn't cover much on defense. It should be surprising, explosive, aggressive. We shouldn't need defense, but sometimes you're caught unawares. But as long as you turn your body, you move the target, my chin, my chin that he thought was here, is now gone. I've coiled my body, ready to do other stuff. And it's really important that A, if he grabs, you can break that structure and attack. If you see that he's about to grab, you can prevent it and attack. And if he's going to strike, again, we can move our way through. Now, the important thing with the edge of hand blows is you can mix them up. They can chew through. So if there are two types of punches coming through, I can move my way in. I can chew up. Imagine your hands like, uh, like one of those electronic mixers covered in razor blades. Zzz. Everything that comes into me, I'm chewing up, smashing up. Chop, 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 boom. So you are crashing and smashing into those arms so that all the stimuli, whether it's a grab, a push, a pull, a strike, are being struck by these hands. And I'm taking as much as I can with me. I'm causing damage wherever I go until I can get close enough to really cause some significant damage. And while we're on about it, we'll talk about prime targets. So prime targets for edge of hand blows. Collarbone, trachea, carotid arteries on either side, the back of the neck, kidneys, and in rare instances, the groin. But again, you can't rely on this one too much. Primary, however, if you practice one thing very, very much, it should be right into the trachea. That's the powerful bit. And it's important whoosh, that the hip can explode with it fully. And you go short range, medium range, or even long range, thinking that no matter where he is, he'll eat something. Elbow, forearm, edge of hand, he's going to catch some damage and some pain. That's a simple use of the edge of hand blow.